Okay, welcome back. Uh, the next uh, presentation is uh, from Felix uh, Winstone from uh, Talkative. And uh, Felix is going to be uh, taking a tour through how we can bring the in-person experience online. So this is an uh, uh, interesting topic around uh, the move to digital platforms, but how do we uh, maintain uh, uh, human contact and interaction? So uh, without further ado, Felix, over to you. Thanks, Jonathan, and thanks everyone for joining today. Um, so, as Jonathan said, going to be talking through uh, bringing the in-person experience online. And this is part of a, a wider trend we're seeing where customer contact is becoming more and more entrenched into what we call the digital customer journey. So we're going to quickly talk through some slides that sort of encapsulates what we're seeing in the market at large. And then as it's a tech talk, we're going to show a demo to uh, illustrate some of these key use cases. So one of the uh, statistics that still surprises me, this is from Contact Babel, uh, that in UK contact centers, it's actually still telephone calls that account for over two thirds of all inbound interactions. And some people call voice a dying channel, but clearly you can't argue with the numbers and uh, 67% is a massive number. And although this is decreasing very slightly year on year, it's still by far the majority. Uh, and this is in stark contrast with how most consumers are interacting with organizations and brands where they will go to your website or your app first. And of all the contact that starts, actually 90% of that contact originates from a website or app visit. So one of the things we still see today is quite a big disconnect between uh, the contact channels that are coming in and where consumers are uh, interacting with brands on their journey. And one of the key concepts we talk about a lot with our clients and partners is this concept of the website contact center funnel. So it looks very much like a, a sales or marketing funnel, but it's actually for customer support, sales, and service. And really the first step of this is digital interaction, whether this is SEO, AdWords, website building. Um, that's where, uh, especially with what's going on at the moment, customers are going to interact with your brand or organization first. And then as they get through their journey and perhaps go to contact you, they will escalate first, uh, customers will self-serve, then they might go to some automated chat system, and then they might, if they really need to, call up, um, and potentially the final stage of this funnel is a video conference or an in-person meeting. With all these different channels, um, some are more suitable than others, depending on the context of what that customer is asking for. So another almost consulting style matrix that we bring up a lot when talking with customers is that for trivial and simple interactions, you really want to get customers to self-serve those um, and really investing in your website and your online journey so that you don't need necessarily a human or a, an expensive contact to um, solve that customer problem is really the right way to go. Um, and there is a lot of merit in understanding how customers are using your website or your app, um, and then putting all the information there and making that user experience really seamless uh, so that the human contact channels such as chat and phone calls and email these are more exception handlers where perhaps there's a problem that's a bit more complex. It might be a higher value uh, financial services application or you're buying a holiday. And in that case, you probably do want the customer to go to a voice call or a chat. So if we come back to this concept of the funnel then, uh, from a technology perspective, what we see uh, very commonly is the solutions used to address each stage of this funnel are often deployed in silos 
perhaps a marketing team has deployed the chat system, the sales team has uh, a voice system or uh, a Teams or a Zoom account. And although there are uh, an incredible amount of sophisticated options for each of these different channels, um, we often find there's a lot of inefficiencies in this siloed approach. Um, and there's a number of reasons for that. So the first one is if you're a customer and you're going through this funnel, if there's no data or context on the organization or contact center side, um, this can lead to customers having to repeat themselves, uh, which is obviously frustrating for a customer, but also adds um, complexity and inefficiency to the contact center. Um, so I think especially with what's going on at the moment, um, organizations are looking to deploy things very quickly and perhaps aren't always taking into account the need to tie up the backend systems to effectively um, harness and meet this online customer journey. So really what we are advising customers to do, uh, or organizations to do where possible, is to join up these systems as much as possible. Um, and we appreciate that um, if you're looking to deploy something very quickly, having a full-blown integration can maybe be something you defer to six months, 12 months down the line. Um, but by having all the systems on the organization side talking together, you really can unlock a lot of cost savings and also um, additional revenue by having a single view of the online customer and having the insight to optimize each stage of the funnel uh, based on data and context you're getting from other stages. So if we think about that funnel, the first tool uh, that we showed there is Google Analytics. This is a pervasive, free, and incredibly powerful tool that gives you insight into exactly how uh, users are using your website. And this information can be really valuable for contact centers because you can start to understand what pages customers were on when they went to contact you. Is there perhaps not enough information on particular parts of the website that's causing an influx in chats or calls or emails? And going back to the uh, advantages of tying the website analytics team with what's going on in IT and contact center, if those two functions within the organization aren't sharing data and aren't working collaboratively, then the contact center team may be saying, uh, we're seeing loads of inquiries about, um, uh, to use an example from one of the councils we work with, about how bin collections are changing during lockdown. Um, if that information is then passed back to the web team, or the web team is able to proactively see what pages are causing uh, a surge in inquiries, they can um, enrich the, contact, uh, the content on that part of the website, perhaps take FAQs that contact center agents are using and put that on their CMS or website page. And that serves to deflect contact. And this is, uh, I guess, a very low tech and um, effective way of deflecting customer contact. Likewise, if we're looking to increase uh, leads or sales conversions, you can actually use Google Analytics to see if you're spending 10,000 pounds a month on AdWords, how those um, visits to the website and then are then converting into live chats or inbound calls and then taking things one step further, how those chats and calls are then uh, influencing uh, e-commerce conversions or basket assists and so on. So the first thing we say when we're speaking with a contact center that we haven't met before is, do you have access to Google Analytics? And if so, uh, if you don't, we recommend doing that first so you can understand this full picture of the customer. Once you have this information then, you can start to uh, trigger contact appropriately, depending on both what you're trying to achieve in your contact center and um, the user's online journey. So there's another uh, tool by 
the folks over at Google called Tag Manager. And again, it's free. It's very um, powerful, and it gives you a lot of granular control over which pages of the website you're deploying contacts options on and how you are intelligently triggering the contact. So a uh, really good example here is a car dealership that we're working with. I uh, saw a lot of drop off on certain pages and they got that information from Google, Google Analytics. They then um, triggered chat to fire on those pages and uh, the triggers took into account availability in the contact center. So they're only offering the trigger when agents were available. And they were able to see how the contact center was able to plug the gap in their um, sales funnel by using this contact center uh, for the website uh, sort of mindset. They went through a thorough process of identifying the, the gaps and then using human power con uh, contact options to appropriately fill those. So I've managed to get through this presentation without mentioning the C word. That's right, chatbots. Um, sorry about that, terrible, terrible pun. Um, the, uh, I guess, desire and need for automation and virtual agents has obviously massively spiked um, during the last six months. And what we are seeing is that there's often a perception that introducing the first uh, layer or taking that first step towards um, introducing automation in your contact center can be complex and a 12 month project and it's gonna cost six figures. I think that may have been the case historically, but I think the tools that are now available in the marketplace mean that you can actually get um, an effective uh, chatbot or virtual agent deployed quickly and cost-effectively. And we'll be showing you how to do this in the demo in a second. What we really would advise that if you are deploying a virtual agent or chatbot mm -hmm. is that it's able to hand off to a live agent and it's part of your overall contact center technology stack rather than a standalone chatbot, which isn't taking into account uh, FAQs from the website or the customer journey context. And it's actually, in some cases, increasing customer contact because there's no way to effectively hand off from bot to human. Another area that I think we're seeing from a technology vendor perspective, a real increase in demand for, uh, and hence the subject of this talk, is bringing the in-store experience online. And with especially retail, brick and mortar stores closing, um, organizations are introducing video chat um, as contact channel. And this is often um, done in an ad hoc way where perhaps you're taking uh, an appointment booking from a customer and then you're having a FaceTime call with them or a Zoom meeting uh, or a Teams meeting. And while this is obviously good for the end customer because it gives them a way to still speak face to face and maybe see a physical product in store, from the organization perspective, it's often deployed in a siloed manner where you're not getting any reporting on this video chat channel in the same way you are with voice or email, or live chat. So one of the uh, tools that we've been seeing a lot of uptake for at Talkative is uh, video chat. And again, this is something we can demo in a second, but essentially it's bringing the ability to do voice or video chat um, from within a website or an app. And it's fully mobile compatible. And the nice thing about it is from an organization perspective is you can turn it on and off and you're able to introduce it on uh, certain pages. You can report on it from within your existing contact center and you're able to introduce video as a channel as part of your agent workload configuration. So going back to the, uh, if you can picture it, the slide of um, how we're tying all these technologies together. I think a 
a really common approach to doing this is having the contact center system shown here is Mitel be the almost single unifying uh, brain or overarching system that controls all these website channels. Um, and that gives agents a single pane of glass to work from. And it gives contact center supervisors and admins uh, a single uh, uh, way to report on these channels and uh, an intelligent system to do all your omni-channel routing. One that we're also seeing becoming more and more popular is rather than necessarily the contact center system being the uh, single brain, um, is actually the CRM or the customer data platform. And the advantage of this is that you get, again, the 360 view of the customer across different channels. And the advantage of something like a Salesforce platform, as we're showing here, is that you can bring in any other organizational data, whether that be e-commerce, product data, or it could be tenant data in a housing situation. Um, and when that interaction comes through for the agent, not only are you seeing the website data in real time, but you're bringing out data from other backend systems to better enable the agent to um, successfully help that customer out. So the website-driven customer contact uh, is something that we see as being um, pervasive across all different industries. So we're seeing councils adopt this mindset. We're, adopt, we're seeing leading retailers, sports organizations, insurance companies, um, a whole host of different use cases and the common thread they're adopting is thinking about the website digital funnel as a key element of how they're deploying uh, contact center technology, but also in terms of how they're looking at their organization and making sure that different departments are speaking to each other and are sharing data effectively. So what I'm gonna do now is um, jump into a, a quick demo in the remaining eight minutes we have. So uh, we're going to be using the Mitel console to be our single pane of glass for agents. Um, so the nice thing about, again, the Mitel system here is we've just got one uh, workspace as an agent. But to quickly show you what this might look like in a, a CRM Salesforce world, um, we have the Salesforce embedded console here. And a popular option over the last couple of months has been just a standalone system for uh, that first three months of deployment to get something up and running in days. And then as a phase two of that deployment project, bring it into the CRM or the contact center system. So what we're going to do here then is we're going to um, start off by visiting the website. Um, we're looking at booking a service as an end customer with this healthcare organization. And we're gonna start off with a chat because we want to book an appointment, um, but we've got a few questions about how much it costs, can we do it remotely and so on. So we met with a triage bot and this is very easily configured. Um, and really the aim of this is to um, solve the customer's problem by bringing through an FAQ if uh, an answer already exists, but if not to um, collect some backend information from the booking system, if this is an existing healthcare member. And finally, to hand off to an agent at the appropriate time if we really need to. So I want to book an appointment, but I'm not a member. So the bot is guiding me down this uh, almost this decision tree-like path. Um, and it's asking me to collect some data. Um, and it's telling me that we do need to hand off and bring in a live agent to complete this process because there's some um, sensitive data that we need to take that we might prefer to do over the phone rather than through a chatbot service. So I'm gonna say, sure, my name is Steve Williams. 
And the bot, now that it has that information, is going to transfer me to a human agent. So I've got uh, an incoming notification here from the Mitel system. I'm already in a, another chat, uh, chat session, but I can handle up to three at once and an email if I need to. And when I accept this interaction, um, we've got the ability to see uh, my existing chat session um, where I've been using some real-time translation because this is obviously a, 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 a multinational healthcare service that I'm working for. But in this case, I just want to just look at the interaction with Steve here. And I can see the transcript of what the bot has um, asked Steve for. The contact center is routing it to the right queue. And I can uh, use some pre pan messages to uh, quickly get through this sign up process. I've offered Steve if uh, he'd like to do a video chat. So what we can now do is we can actually pivot this chat interaction into a one or two way video call. And uh, the end customer obviously has to give their permission to use the video. And this is going to launch uh, an embedded uh, voice video and screen share capability into the uh, website session. So because I'm using my webcam for hop-in, it's using my other webcam here, but I can now uh, say hello to the website visitor. They can say hello to me, and we can make this bigger and go full screen if we need to. And this is a fully mobile compatible video chat service. So if someone is coming in from an Android or an iPhone, this will uh, go to a full screen mode like you might get in FaceTime or WhatsApp video. And what I can do as an agent is continue to chat. But in this case, I'm going to video chat with the uh, website visitor. And I can actually even uh, share local documents um, or applications and stream those out to uh, Steve here on the website. So I'm going to be, uh, in this case, showing some slides to Steve, but it could be a membership sign up form um, or some current availability from my application that's got all the doctor's um, availability. So with two minutes to go, I'm going to uh, end this video call. We're going to end the chat and I'm going to leave some feedback for, uh, for this agent here. And I think at this point, it would be good to see if there's any questions from Jonathan or anyone else in the audience. My sort of call to action would be, um, if you're working in the contact center today, and you're not thinking about how the website journey is causing or even increasing contact into your contact center, ask your marketing team for Google Analytics. If you don't have an analytics system in place, please get one and start uh, tracking these things. If you would like a demo of the system, please contact Britannic. Or if you want to just try it out, come to gettalkative.com, where you can start a video chat or a web chat with one of our friendly team. Thank you. OK, brilliant, Felix. Thank you very much. So. Uh... Uh, again, if we've got uh, uh, questions, please do add them to the uh, to the chat, and uh, uh, we'll pose them to Felix and uh, and see if we can answer them. Okay, so uh, feedback is great presentation, Felix. So that's uh, that's always positive. Um, it, it's it's one of those that. Um, I know if you if you've uh, answered all the points and you've wowed people with the capability, uh, you may not get lots of questions. But uh, yeah, we'll, we'll just we'll just keep an eye on the stream. Everyone's jaws are on the floor, Jonathan. Well, it's, it's clever technology, isn't it? And uh, I think um, you know some of the uh, enhancements recently to be able to 
uh, not just have uh, video interactions via a, a website, but also a you know mobile device and uh, uh, you know turn the camera around. So it, it, it's it's more than just um, face to face uh, contact. It's actually streaming uh, uh, video back into a, a central point. And I think you know we we, we talk a lot about the contact center, but um, you know if we if we look at use cases, there are of course. Um, uh, use cases for this outside of a, you know what is a traditional contact center, uh, which could be uh, knowledge workers, it could be uh, you know remote uh, te uh, technicians who uh, you know you might want to do some remote diagnostics as opposed to uh, sending an engineer out uh, to site. So I think there's some you know some really great use cases. It, it's really important, uh, as we said at the start of this, to to join up those two worlds. You know where we're looking at moving people online and to uh, digital platforms you know the question is what happens when they get stuck and uh, if you can be on the same page as the customer who's having the problems and guide them through uh, it's a powerful position to be in okay well i i think uh, i think we've done well uh, you've uh, we don't have any uh, real tricky questions for you to answer felix there it's uh, you know great presentation hopefully lots of uh, Food, uh, food for thought for people. So, I'd like to thank you for your uh, um, your presentation. Really interesting. Some great technology uh, being showcased there. Uh, if you want to know more, as Felix said, do get in contact with us, and uh, we can arrange a review. By all means, you know, attend the booth and uh, dig into it in more detail. Uh, so, Felix, thank you. Great presentation as always. Take care, and we'll catch you soon. Thank you. Thanks, Jonathan. Thanks, everyone, for watching. So um, what we're going to have next is uh, uh, a presentation from uh, uh, Dr. Rachel Bentz uh, from uh, Queen Mary University of London. And uh, uh, Rachel will be going through uh, Queen Mary's uh, digital journey from uh, clearing to uh, inquiry management. So uh, uh, very interesting project that we undertook uh, together um, over the summers dur during uh, during lockdown and uh, and really it was on the back of uh, you know what's been a successful uh, partnership to date. So uh, we'll catch you catch you again in three minutes. Um, oh, sorry, ten seven minutes, ten minutes past uh, eleven. So uh, you've got time to go and grab a coffee and uh, and take a break, and we'll see you shortly. Thank you. <laughs>